Hello, lovely ladies. All right. I'm doing this live because I started answering Hannah's Q&A Tuesday question from the Smart Women Business Facebook group. Um, I started writing a blog post and it's a bit of a pet subject of mine and it started to get a bit big. So I'm going to answer it live because then it, I'll try and write a blog post out of it later. Um, I will be referring to my notes, so just excuse me if I look down and up and stuff. But anyway, so Hannah asked how we reach our audience in this time of non-traditional media. How do we pull them away from their TV sets and into a transaction with us? Now, this video is going to be a very quick rundown without going too deep on execution. It will probably bring up some questions for you. Feel free to ask them in the Smart Women of Business Facebook group um, and we can talk about them. This is by no means a definitive guide. Um, marketing is, is huge. It's something I've been doing, I don't know, 12 years or something. I've been doing it for a while. And there are many, many elements to every single marketing campaign that you execute. But this will give you a starting point and lots to think about. So I could talk about this all day, which is the problem, but we'll start with the basics um, and hopefully it will give you some ideas on what you need to do to create an effective advertising campaign um, or, or brand awareness campaign for your business. So first and foremost, and I know I go on and on about this, um, as with all things in marketing, you need to ask who your audience is and where they are at. Too often as marketers, we presume to know our audience. And have you ever actually taken the time to ask your audience how they found you in the first place? Um, we can presume they're finding us from our TV ads, but in fact, they're finding us through word of mouth. Personally, 99% of my business, my core business, Jay Mackay Communications, comes from word of mouth client referrals. Um, people say to me, why haven't I heard of you? And I said, because I don't do any promotion. Um, I am pretty much at capacity all the time. And in the event I get quiet, I will do some advertising. Um, so whether you have a bricks and mortar retail space or a storefront or an online store or a service-based business, you can ask the question of your customers, when they ring you, oh, can I just ask you how you found out about me? Or in the case of referrals, people usually say, oh, blah, blah, I mentioned you to me or um, I saw you on Facebook, whatever. So this will give you an idea of where your audience is currently feeding in from. Um, it might be different to what you presume. Um, I mean, I know there are certain sections of the market that aren't online but um you need to have a look at at your audience number one so audiences shift all the time in our business um and researching your audience will make every single thing you do in your marketing easier um from advertising to writing brochures creating newsletters um if you're crystal clear on your audience you'll create a seamless coherent marketing experience for your customers and if you Build a seamless experience. You enhance that brand awareness. It's not chopping and changing. They always know who they're speaking to. Um, so a strong brand, obviously, is a really good start. Um, so you just need to know you've got your basics right there and your audience, and you've got to create your brand with your ideal audience in mind. So think about who's your dream customer or client in a perfect world if you could have someone walk into your your shop or contact you every day or every week asking to work with you or to buy something who would they be and what would they buy because there are different levels of transactions there's butter bread and butter transactions that keep us going you know the small transactional stuff um this is especially um salient in retail um there are the kind of middling uh transactions you know the middle of the range and then there's the high-end stuff and if you sold one high-end product instead of a hundred small products you know that would possibly make the same money for you so you really need to have a think about that and your product 
where they're positioned in the market, how you're targeting them. I know this is all complicated, but I'm trying to be simple here. Sorry. So think about the demographics of your ideal customer. I we're trying here to distill your target audience down to a target audience of one person. Sounds bizarre, but if you can identify their age, their gender, their marital status, their income, their pets, their family, their education, you can paint a picture of who they are. Um, you can give them a name, which I've spoken about, I think, on this blog before or Jane Mackay Communications, because you love that person. They're your, they're your ideal customer. They're your, your perfect match. So I, um, I have done that with my businesses it's an interesting process so you also need to examine who you enjoy working with um, in terms of customers you know you, you want the people that come in make a decision they buy they leave again or do you want people you build relationships with so next you need to examine psychographics um, so their interests where they hang out online um, who they follow on Facebook the brands they like the car they drive what their interests are what their hobbies are um, and all of that kind of stuff beyond the the uh, what's it called like the, the beyond demographics um, the con qualitative stuff instead of the quantitative stuff so once you get into the headspace of your target audience and this is a process that can take some time I'm not I'm not going to kid you there but if you do the research on your audience it will make everything all your advertising will have a lot more cut through it will be a lot more effective it will have high engagement so take the time to do this um, you'll understand your clients and your customers motivations better and you can also shift from where your customers who are coming in now if you're not happy with who you're attracting at the moment you can shift that audience um, through some targeted advertising um, this will also knowing your audience will help you get clear on um, where to advertise what images to use and the language that you're going to use as well because they're all elements that are really important in an advertising campaign as you know so now you have a picture of your ideal customer where they are um, you can formulate a plan on how to find them and to get them through your doors. So have a think about where your ideal customer is in the life cycle, um, customer life cycle. So we have six stages of the customer life cycle. So one, they're anonymous, they don't know you and have never heard of you. And if you're trying to shift your target audience, this may be where your ideal customer is. Two, um, awareness, they've heard of your brand but have never pre purchased from you. Three, they're in the research phase. So potential customer who wants to buy and is researching which product they will buy and where from. So here's a fact that will blow your socks off. 86% of all purchases are researched online prior to a sale. And I don't know about you, but if you're anything like me, I will stand in a store and research the price while I'm actually in the store especially big ticket items. Um, stage four is purchase. Yay, we like those people. Five is retention, so now you have them. What are you going to do to hold on to that customer and um, maintain that customer relationship? Six, advocacy. So they love your brand. They champion your product at every opportunity. So ideally, you want all of your previous customers to be advocates for your brand. Um, this is achieved through uh, a number of factors, including but not limited to delivering a high quality product. And if you're in business and you're not delivering a high quality product, um, why not? Two, exceptional and memorable customer service. How often do we have conversations about poor customer service. You can be the standout and have incredible customer service or different customer service. Deliver something different. Have a think about interesting ways you can do this. Uh, three, following up with your customers um, through direct mail, ooh, expensive these days, or an e-newsletter so you remain top of mind next time they come to make a purchase. Four, being awesome on social media and building your brand awareness and doing scary videos like I do. 
So you need to work out who you want to talk to, where they are at, how you're going to get them to make a purchase, and how you're going to follow up with that. So I talk about um, memorable customer service. Um, something as simple as offering gift, gift wrapping, uh, sending them a follow-up postcard because that's a cheap mail option these days, um, you know, a calendar, some sort of physical product in the mail, a voucher for a follow-up purchase, a voucher share with a friend. Um, they're pretty easy things you can do um, on Facebook. So first step to building your brand awareness is building a list. And I know people talk about lists a lot. Um, lists are important. Um, I think 61% off the top of my head of all marketing or all sales are from direct mail through e-newsletters. So e-newsletters are still the most effective way to market to people. Um, so if you have a retail space, you can do something as easy as put um, a jar on the bench, guess the jelly beans, you know, really simple stuff. You know, win a shirt, win a book, win a voucher. You know, something you can do something really low cost, and you will get and ask every single person that comes in to enter. Um, really simple. Um, if you're online only, you can create an opt-in. Um, I have freebies on the Smart Women in Business website um, for people to download. I'm coming up with some freebies for my Jay Mackay Communications website. Um, if you've got any suggestions, let me know. What do you want in a freebie? What will you give me your valuable email address for? Um, and if you're online, uh, you can or on Facebook, you can easily run a competition through your pages. Uh, so onto actual advertising. The scary bit. So, oh, before I say that, another point on small business clients, I always, always, with small business clients, recommend having a go at free print media. So you know the local papers that run in your town? We have one, one publisher, but a lot of towns have more than one. The leader ones in Melbourne. Um I know country towns like Wangaratta have a couple. Um, if your town's anything like mine, you, they will be happy to run media releases from local businesses. Um, media releases follow a pretty standard format. Um, you identify the who, the what, and the when in the first paragraph. It takes me back to advertising school or marketing school. Um, and the how and the why in the context of quotes. Always do quotes. Don't just do body copy. And then you flesh it out with some copy with a call to action at the end, including your website address. Um, they won't always publish your website address, but sometimes they will. Um, do you guys want a template on this? Let me know if you want a template, media release template. I can do one for you if that wasn't clear enough. Um, where was I? Media releases. Okay, so... You just find like editor at what well, ours is editorial at East Vic Media. Um, so it's editorial, it is not paid. You do not pay for this. Um, some newspapers will contact you and say, We want you to advertise. Uh, print media advertising is pretty expensive, but if it represents a reasonable ad spend for you, I have not found it effective in my local paper. Um, but you know, anything like that is building up brand awareness. I always go editorial every, every time. Um, there is a difference between editorial and advertorial. Editorial is straight out journalism. Advertorial is those things you see in magazines and they go advertising feature and they're ads dressed up as articles. I don't like those. They leave me feeling a bit icky, but go right ahead if you think it's return on investment for your business. Um, you can run media releases on any number of things just make it newsworthy don't make it we've got this new product there's a big difference between sales copy and editorial journalist style copy um, just make it fact-based um, have the quotes you know we're really happy to be opening our new business we saw that this was something that was missing from our town and we know that we can deliver this product provide a solution to our ideal customers 
who are X. So if you opened a, I'll use a, a, an example, um, a lady who I know is on this group opened a dog sitting and pet services business. So her, she could say, she could run a media release saying, we've opened, we are delivering a much needed um, uh, service to the people of our town. So people who are busy with their, at work all day, don't need to feel guilty about leaving their dogs at home because they know they're having fun at our dog sitting service. Boom. And it's really cute. It's actually like a play centre for dogs. Anyway, you can create a media release out of anything. Just make it newsworthy. Don't make it sales. Copy. Two different things. Um, now, the granddaddy of them all in this day and age and by far the most cost effective is Facebook um, slash Instagram advertising because Facebook bought Instagram, so now they're correlated. One danger here I have found that is if you connect your Facebook page to your Instagram account, Instagram business accounts have lower reach than personal personal accounts because they want you to spend money on advertising. So that's the only real danger here. I would just stick with Facebook advertising if you like. You can go with Instagram. Um, they're really, they're just not going anywhere. Facebook is here, but you don't want to rely so heavily on Facebook that if they close up tomorrow, you have nothing left. So that's why I always recommend people have a website and a Facebook page. Anyway. With all the target audience research you will have done on their demographics and their psychographics, because they are two things you can define within the Facebook Advertising Manager, Audience Manager, you can define an audience by age, location, um, uh, their interests, what they follow, who they like. It's, it's quite scary. Um, you'll know exactly who you want to talk to on Facebook. So come up with an offer, an opt-in, a freebie, make it stand out graphically. Um, there's good places to get free stock images. Um, there's death to stock. There's Pixabay. There's Unsplash, which I love. Um, and come up with something with a clear call to action. Um, you always need to be clear on who your audience is. Could I say that one more time? Who is your audience? Be clear. And what do you want them to do? You need to create a very clear call to action and tell your audience what you want them to do. So um, in doing research, here are two very quick facts from Ad Espresso's research. The most popular headline on a Facebook ad is just five words long, short, concise copy, and you need to use a clear call to action. Um, the learn more button, which is built into Facebook, is the most popular and effective button. But obviously, if you're selling something, yeah, you can say learn more and take them off site. Facebook do not like connecting advertising um, links to pages with pop-ups, they don't like that. So avoid it. You can send them to a lead page, which is a blank page with a fill in the opt-in. Um, what else on Facebook advertising? I think that's sort of it. So be clear on who your audience is. Tell them what you want them to do. Be very narrow on your audience. And after all this, if you think TV still re represents good return on investment for your advertising dollar, then make sure you get a good deal on advertising, that they give you lots of free spots, fall back airtime, and you don't get irrelevant times. Okay, make sure you get some prime time in there. Um, and see if, if they're local, if they'll give you some um, fall back airtime on their partner networks. Most TV networks partner with a radio network so there you have it i'll try and convert this into a blog post at some stage but that was pretty epic and if you have any questions come to the facebook group smart women in business and i will try to answer your questions okay see you